Hey guys, so this is a little bit about uh, how I made the cam, uh, which is mounted to the uh, 15 to 1 gear reducer and uh, drives this, uh, this wheel, which is connected to the power hammer arm. And uh, so it starts off by measuring, you know, the distance between the center of the shaft here up to the bottom of the wheel, which is about four inches. And so anything four inches or less won't engage the wheel. And then the question becomes, how high do you want the hammer to, uh, to rise? And right now it's two, it's two feet from the wheel uh, to, this, uh, uh, to the railroad track anvils. And so whatever I lift here, if I lift six inches here, then I'll get one foot lift over here. So, and that's because of the two inch, uh, two feet of arm here. So that's what I decided to go with, six inches. All I need is maximum lift of six inches uh, from this wheel here to get 12 inches of lift over here. Um, and then I'll tell you how I laid out the cam, which is over here. The cam itself, I took, t I took, uh, you know, two by two, two foot by two foot uh, pieces of three quarter inch plywood, uh, glued them together, and then uh, let that uh, dry. And then I had to lay out then the uh, the cam. So this is a little bit about how I did that. So it starts off on that piece of plywood. I drew two circles. The first circle was four inches. So that's the center of the shaft um, for the gearbox. Took and drew a four inch uh, radius circle. So a total, total eight inch diameter. And then I drew another uh, circle representing the maximum height, which was another six inches for a total 20 inch diameter circle. So draw two circles, one eight inch diameter, 20 inch diameter with the different radiuses here you can see that and then the next thing I did on the piece of wood as I was laying this out was I divided it up into four four quadrants and I decided that the first quadrant I wouldn't have any lift so I would continue to you know I would cut and be consistent and stick with that four inch uh, four inches of radius uh, so I would cut straight down here and cut over here and then I have three more quarters left to make up the six inches to get to the top of over here so all I did is I marked on the wood two inches four inches and the six inches which basically you know cuts it into a third a third a third a little bit higher and and then the full lift and then I just drew a nice line here uh, to make the cam, um, which ended up, uh, you know, being something as simple as this. So it drops down to that point in which the wheel won't engage, which is four inches from the shaft. It stays that way until about here, or the, a quarter of the a quarter of the uh, of the turn, and then it starts to edge its way up to a, a maximum of two inches. And then it edges itself up again to four inches. And then it maxes and melts up to six inches away from, you know, from this inner circle. Okay, hope that uh, makes sense. Here's the wheel assembly. Um, I used, uh, it's four inches by three and a half inches by half inch plate here that was welded to the bottom of this uh, arm and then a little bit of a you know, triangular gusset there to just to add some additional weld onto the uh, onto it because it's going to take you know quite a bit of abuse here and these are the bolts that hold the the wheel that I bought there again is the cam and in addition to the uh, glue I did put in some lag bolts here around the edge just to make sure it held together in terms of the back end of the uh, hammer arm, I did uh, install some, some 
homemade you know loops here out of uh, I think that's three eighths uh, round stock um, to add this spring which is a six and a half inch by one inch spring that uh, just does a nice job to add a little bit of uh, a little helper uh, to help slam that uh, head down and and then how I mounted this arm here to the uh, to the back end so this is a piece of uh, one and a half inch uh, square stock and it slips over the top of a piece of one inch threaded bar which I have some over here I guess it took some of this so this came out and I started with that had my one and a half inch uh, stock inside this is another piece of uh, stock that goes so this is inch and a, inch and a quarter that slips into here and this one inch round stock slips into here and together it makes a nice uh, um, way of holding it without having to buy uh, pillow blocks and it's uh, working out pretty good and I got the two washers here to keep it and a little bit of spacers to keep it from from going back and forth. The other thing I try to do is to uh, reinforce it with a little piece of angle down here just to get some more weld on that arm. Um, and the threaded rod comes all the way through with some one inch uh, one inch nuts to uh, to hold it off on both sides. Overall, I know from a, from a dimension standpoint, uh, you know the arm is, is certainly 50 inches. It goes all the way through to, to this point. I did leverage some 5 16 bolts here, number eights, uh, to uh, hold on to the, the head, you know, which slides underneath. So again, this is a one and a half inch, and it fits what fits perfectly in there is a inch and a quarter square um, up to about up to about this point. And so if I want to change heads, I just take these three bolts out, slide that out, and put another head in. Um, which I did. This is the uh, finished uh, head. I did use some bolts to to help uh, you know further secure it in addition to the welding and then inside here is a piece of uh, one inch um, round stock. It wasn't the threaded rod it was just solid and I put this in and welded it out just to add it give it some more stability at this end. Um, so that was this I mounted this on to the uh, to the base here using uh, these 5 16 bolts on both sides. The reason I did that is because I want to be able to take this off um, as needed and uh, be able to switch out if I ever wanted to uh, a different type of head. So this is, is welded to that and then this is bolted to that so this doesn't really move it's pretty good this is all filled with uh, this is an 8 by 8 by, by quarter inch steel tubing and uh, about 27 and a half inches uh, high and it's filled with uh, with sand uh, to keep and uh, keep it uh, and this is not mounted to a and welded to a uh, a one inch piece of plate down below this arm, as you can see, I, you know, uh, I didn't make it long enough. Uh, but uh, so anyways, this arm ends up being 52 and a half uh, inches. And that's an uh, inch, inch and a half square stock. I put these center supports in. They're 26 and a half inches. Um, those also uh, should be 52. Uh, the, one, the ones on the bottom should be 52 and a half inches. This is just a piece of uh, angle. Uh, it's a half inch flat stock, a half inch thick uh, by one inch flat stock, and it's 69 inches long. It goes from the top all the way down to the bottom on an angle uh, just to keep it from uh, rocking back and forth. Um, in the back side here, these are quarter inch angle, uh, and they're 55 inches high, and they're tied together. Uh, in the back in three spots with 11 and a half inch uh, you know piece of uh, flat stock which is which ends up being two and a half inches wide uh, by three sixteenths thick 
and I've got three of those. So that holds the back end here, uh, this whole back end frame. Now, I mounted the mounting the uh, the gear reducer in the motor uh, on top of right now is uh, it's not it's not uh, welded or connected at all, but it's to this uh, frame with a piece of uh, uh, piece of plywood on top. Uh, the motor is uh, hooked up to um, some some hinges so that uh, it can rotate and uh, add you can depending on uh, and you can change different speeds uh, uh, coming out the uh, gear reducer uh, this this frame built was you know 19 inches uh, 19 inches deep uh, the frame down below here is 27 and a half inches and in terms of width it's uh, 14 and a half inches so 14 and a half inches that way. And then of course on top, the, the plywood, I put that down at 16 uh, inches, 20 and a half. So 16 by 20 and a half inches for the top. And here's the, uh, the motor mount, mounted to you know, several uh, hinges. And then I put this piece here, which it just adds tension. I, I, I could use a, uh, and I tried using a, a clamp to simply hold down the, uh, the motor here. Uh, to put the tension on the on the on the belt, but uh, found that that uh, because of the vibration, um, it would uh, kick out the uh, kick out the clamp. So I put this uh, piece of five sixteenths by five inch, five and a half inch uh, bolt here, which uh, works pretty good. All the bolts I used, I made sure I used uh, those lock washers because I know the vibration would have uh, loosened them up uh, pretty quickly. All right, guys, I think that's about it. So far, so good. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, overall, I think I spent about um, $400 on this in total. A lot of this was scrap or you know picked up uh, from the scrapyard. Uh, $400 excluding this motor, which I had. This motor is a one and a half horsepower motor I picked up from Tractor Supply. It's a farm duty motor, and uh, that I already had. So I'm not counting that in, but if you did, it's about a $300 motor, so $300 plus $400 gets you to about $700 in total from scratch. Um, but overall, uh, uh, for me right now, this is about a $400 uh, power hammer, which I think is going to do well. It's just helping me, f you know, fuller out some of the bigger uh, pieces of steel that I want to forge. So that's it, and. Uh, Hope you've enjoyed it, and if you have any any thoughts, uh, questions, uh, you know, feel free to leave a comment. All right. Listen. Thanks for watching, guys.